Hey everyone, this is Deborah. Today I'm going to do some more playing with my gel press. I think what I like about playing with the gel press is it's the instant gratification you get. Because once you pull the print, which doesn't take that much time, you end up with this item that you can use, either in a journal or in another art piece or whatever. So I want to try this technique that I saw on the internet which is using sticky tape on the gel press to create like um, a fence paling type of thing. So I've just laid down my strips of tape over the top of the gel press and I don't know if you can see them there they're kind of like laid in strips and I've left some little gaps in between and now I'm going to put down some other um, colours on top of that. So we'll start with this white pink that I've sort of blended here. And I've learnt some tricks about this. If you press hard your roller doesn't go round and round and you know I've learnt that I have to press softly because I'm a bit of a bull in a china shop when it comes to some of this stuff. So you know there's a lesson for you just don't press so hard. The other thing I've learnt is that you don't have to Put a mass of paint onto the gel press that you can just put a little bit onto it. Get some light purple colour here happening. But you want to cover the roller of the um, of the brayer, the whole of the brayer, the roller section, obviously, because if you don't, the paint's not going to go on as you're putting it on like this. Okay, we'll see what happens there. I'll just spray that off. I'm just using some sketching paper, which is, I've just got a book of it and I've just cut it in half, basically pulled it out of the book and cut it in half here. Let's see what happens then. I pull this I should get this fence paling effect okay that's okay it's not great I sort of thought it would be a bit you know better than that let's try another piece maybe with some darker purple rather than that light and some darker colors and maybe some you know something a bit more vibrant probably the word I'm wanting to use. Got some turquoise here. Give it a rub. Oh that's better. Look at that. Sorry, I put it up the wrong <laughs> pushed it to the wrong thing. That's much better. Maybe it's the colour that I like better in this one. And let's try that again. We'll do some more of that pretty turquoise. Well, I've got it out on the craft mat. Also, I'm trying not to be too, you know, predictable as to where I'm putting that paint. I'm kind of just rolling it around. And now I might do some of this sort of pink colour that I created before. Again, that's very, very pale. You can see the difference, even though I have put some of the, the paint on it, you still get that same effect, but it's very, very pale. So what can I do to brighten it up? Maybe I'll put some of this blue on, and this time I'm just going to put it directly onto the gel press. Maybe I'm just, the colours I'm using are not vibrant enough. Maybe I'm just in a vibrant mood today and I want them to be bright. And then I'll put some of this magenta down as well. Love this because you don't know what's going to happen until you start pulling it off the press. That's okay. That's nice and dark. And I just want to put those back down. So they're not sticking quite as much as what I thought they would. And I'm just going to take another pull off that one. So I think that would be quite nice the second time round. At least with this, you know exactly what you've got immediately. You don't have to wait for anything. <laughs> Probably why I'm really enjoying my gel press work. 
Oh, that's actually pulled the tape off with it. Easily solved. That's really nice. Look at that. So maybe I prefer the second pull. Maybe I'm just not um, putting enough on or something. I'm not quite sure what, what's happening. But that was quite good. I've got four. This one's still a bit wet. They're all still a bit wet, actually. I've got four different things. So I've got those two. And then I've got... Oh, actually, I've got five. I've got these two that I've just done then. That's still really wet, this one. This one's dry because it doesn't have that much paint on it. And then I've got that last one that I just did. So the next thing that I wanted to do was something I was playing with the other day. And if you've looked on YouTube and seen, um, there's a lady on there called Kate Crane who does a lot of this sort of work with um, the gel press. And she does these different techniques where she gets part of um, the gel press. She has it so that you have different um, things coming through the gel press and it's not just the one colour, so you're not mixing it directly on. And I wanted to try and channel her today and see if I could make something like that. I'm just going to put some stuff down on the press. She always recommends that from what I see that you let things dry between different layers and I guess that that's you know probably something to think about when you're doing this if you're following somebody you should listen to what they say so I'm um, I don't know I always think some of those techniques that people show you you think oh that looks so nice but you know I'm never going to be able to do it which is why I th thought today I would try and do what she does. So I've just let that dry a little bit between the layer and now I'm going to take a stencil or uh, something that I can actually lift some of that colour off with. I just have to find it. I'll put a little bit more blue in there as well. These are the um, Carabelle Studio texture plates and I guess there's a couple of things what surprised me is I knew that they were A6 and that you know that's half an A5 basically and I thought oh that would be all right but they are really quite tiny you can see they only arrived in the mail yesterday I haven't even opened them up but this is the A6 one here and I mean I don't have a big hand so that's um that's quite small. This one is called um, Rons or Rounds. It's Rons in French, obviously. And the idea with these is that you can put them on and they'll lift the paint off. And because the images are back to front, you'll get, particularly when you've got words and things, you'll get that onto your, um, onto your actual image will be up the right way that's what I'm trying to say people yes your image will be up the right way so this one here has got letters and numbers I actually didn't realize I bought this one it was a bit of a shock when I opened the box I must say it was like I didn't think I bought that one but when you put it on obviously I'll just grab another piece of paper oh they smell I can smell the rubber <laughs> I didn't know they smelled um, so if you put that on there, like that, and pull that off, that when you look at that and put it down on something, if you used it to stamp with, and I'm just showing you now, then your letters and things would be around the wrong way. And if you don't mind that, then you could use it for that. I actually don't mind that, but that's why it's... Uh, texture plate for the gel press because when you put that down you're leaving that image and the image is going to be up the right way once you print. Now I just wanted then to put down a little bit of white and this is what Kate Crane does and she puts down like a layer to pull everything off so it has to be light. See I don't think my stuff's dry maybe I put too much on because I didn't think that the colours below actually mixed with the background colour. And that's how you keep your 
different layers. Let's have a look and see what I get here. Could be anything. Could be horrible. Might be nice. Yeah, I can already feel that that's not working. See, I basically got mud. <laughs> okay, so what did I do wrong? And make sure I don't get as much paint on there this time. This one here, this texture plate is butterflies. Again, it's got writing on it. And so if you do it up the other way and stamp it, you're not going to get what you think you're going to get. I'm just pressing that in and lifting it. And I can see the impression of butterflies on there. So we'll see what happens when I do a pull off this one. You can just wash these apparently in water and um, soap and clean them up as you go and I'm just going to put some purple down so I'm trying not to get too much paint onto my roller my brayer because I don't want to um, have too much paint on there and I haven't um, put any texture or anything down on that I'm just trying to cover make sure I've got the plate covered all over so I don't get gaps okay I think I was a bit heavy-handed last time and and then I'm going to put this one is another one this one is called twist and it's actually bigger so it's made to fit a certain type of jelly plate a certain size I think it's uh it looks about six by six inches to me that my jelly plate is five by seven so it might be six and a half by six and a half We'll just put that down. You don't have to press all of it either. You could use bits of it. You want to make sure that it's not moving around in the paint. It's really pretty. Look at the colours in that. <laughs> almost. I don't know if you have to wash them. You almost don't want to wash them. They're so nice. And then a bit of white. Just do a bit of clean up here. Just to put over the top as the layer will be the very background of it so we'll have hopefully we'll have some of the blue and the purple and the red and then the background will be white so you shouldn't see much of it but I do know the final layer you have to cover all of it in the final colour I don't know I've got the air conditioning on so I'm not sure if that's helping or hindering what I'm trying to do because um, you know sometimes this stuff can be resistant in different humidities because Brisbane where I live is a very humid climate and we're moving right into the middle of summer now it's mid January we're coming up to mid January so it's not our hottest month February is our hottest month if we get to February it's going to be very hot but it's still warm enough not to be pleasant to craft with unless I've got the AC on I might have to rethink my gel pressing to the cooler days okay here we go there you go you can see the swirls definitely I can't really see the butterflies I've got to say but it's still pretty I've still got some stuff on there so I'm just going to add another layer and this time I'm going to make it like a more of a lilac -y color put some white into this purple that's sitting here on my mat I'm expecting to get some of the blue and turquoisey colored blue and the red and other colors that I put down I'm expecting some of that layer to lift off. 
and fingers crossed that it's going to. Okay, so this is the first print that I just pulled then. Let's see if I can get something that's a bit um, lighter in colour. I should because I've put down that lilac. You can really feel it when the gel press works. If you haven't used one before, you can feel as you're pulling it off whether or not it's pulling correctly. And this one is pulling correctly. Look at that. That's really nice. Can you see all the swirls in there? There's a bit of a white patch through the center, but I don't mind that. And you can see some of the darker purple and that blue that I put down before. And a bit of, the, I guess, the red coming through as well. So when I said you don't have to press it all, this is what I meant. You can just do a part of it like that and get some of it pressed rather than all of the gel press. Coming in with this violet now, putting some of that down on the plate, not everywhere, just in some of the empty spots. This time I've mixed a bit of lime in with the white, just mainly white, just a tiny bit of lime I'm mixing up in this top corner here. So it's not so stark. I've let that dry, I think, hopefully for long enough. I need to clean my mat. It's got paint all over the back of it as well. The craft mat. I think it's like I'm too busy. I'm too busy to be cleaning it. And I probably should give it a clean when I'm finished up here. I can see the swirls, but I don't actually think that that's worked very well. I think it's a bit too boxy, but I'll try and fix it. I'm just now going to put down some more background, maybe in this uh, pink. I'm making up some more pink with the remains of the red that's left on the mat. I think I just put two, when I was putting the initial paint down, I went a bit too boxy, so I kind of did a bit here, a bit there, and I've ended up with boxy sort of things in across the plate rather than randomness, which is what I was aiming for. And I'm going to pull this onto, oh, here's a bit of paper. The other thing is that I'm, I'm trying to pull it onto the rough side. This particular paper is drawing slash you know art paper so it does have a rough side and a smooth side so I'm sort of looking out for that as well that's okay and before I take another pull I'm going to put that down again some of that pink left on here and I'm going to do a, another one this time I'm going to use this one and this I just got from um, is it called Daiso it's just it's actually an oven um, mitt for taking pots out of the oven but it was only a couple of dollars, so I thought I'd grab that and see if I can get some texture happening with that. I have used it before and it's worked quite well. See how it creates this lovely crisscross pattern. And the price difference is, you know, you really can't compare, let me say. Because it's uh, totally, totally different in price, these two. I'm going to put a bit more of this blue down. I 
pigment printed onto this one that I did before. So I wasn't, you know, 100% happy with this one. And so I'm hoping that I can improve it a bit by doing this. got some of that crisscross happening it's still not fabulous we'll put that away and the other thing that I was looking at what she does Kate Crane is she'll do like a, a blob and then she'll paint with her fingers so I thought I'd try that too while I'm here I'm determined to make these butterflies work. I bought them, I love them, and I haven't yet got a good art print with them. So let's just see if we can actually make them work. They look really pretty there though. <laughs> I can feel it's working. It's really funny because you can actually feel when something works. Yeah, I can feel it. It's going to work. It's really funny, isn't it? You think I'm crazy? I'm not. I assure you. Hang on, it's upside down. Here you go. I could feel the way that was pulling off. When it's not going to work, it pulls off really easily. When it's going to work, you get this sort of suctiony feeling as you're pulling it back. You can feel the paint sort of gripping. So that's, that's pretty good, isn't it? I think I like that better than using the roller to put things on because you get much more um, diversity. Like you don't get this, where's my boxy here? You don't get this boxy look like I have here because I've just rubbed that on with my hand, with my fingers. It's much, much prettier, isn't it? Excellent. Okay, that's pretty good. So there you go. I think I've proven that you can do what Kate Crane does on her site. That you don't have to be Kate Crane in order to make some nice jelly prints. In fact, I'm pretty chuffed with them. Let me see. This one would be my favourite, followed by this. And I really like this one too. It's really, the swirls in that one are really nice. And even though that's boxy, that's still nice. The other thing, I really like this one. Now that was done over the top of another piece. So don't forget that you can do that. If you don't like what you've done, you can put something over the top. And this one here, which didn't really work, although you can still see it, it's still really nice. But I might be able to pull something else on top of that to brighten it up a bit because it's a little bit too dull. I like things a bit brighter. But definitely I love the butterflies. So this is Deborah, and uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed while I played with my gel press and my new art printing or texture plates. I'll catch you next time. Cheers.